Welcome to the Design for a Living podcast with Chelsea Coriel. On this week's episode, I'm actually going to be giving you an intro lesson into rendering. Hi, yeah, yeah. This is always the biggest, the, the thing that people take my course for. Um, it, it's something that we we kind of learned in design school, and. I guess I always thought I would have learned more. (laughs) We were never graded on our renderings. We just learned some basic techniques and some basic tricks, how to draw a plant, how to draw a window. But in our world as designers, the hardest thing is to, you you can have this great um, inspired creative idea, but how do you get that across to your client that you're expecting them to pay you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for. There's a trust there. And you can describe it and you can show pictures. Mood boards are fantastic. But there's something about seeing the room put together. And a lot of designers come to me and they use the digital 3D renderings, which is great. But I've been doing these hand renderings really uh, since a store that I worked at, uh, managed in uh, California. And we had just opened and it was our first big client. And the designer was, he he can't picture it. He just can't picture it. I said, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can draw it for him. And I had never tried to render ever since I graduated from design school. So I happened to have some old Prismacolor markers. They're my favorites. Um, My Prismacolor pencils. So I quickly just sketched, really just scribbled it out. And we sold the job. Since then, I would do all of the renderings for all the designers that worked for me. Um, Then I learned I can teach it. I've been teaching rendering to designers. And there is just something about that connection with your client and having it hand-drawn. They can... They can feel, you know, the emotion in it. They can see, um, you know, how the colors go together and how the textures. But I'm going to teach you some really cool tricks because I always hear as well, oh, I can't draw. I can't draw a stick figure. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Yes, you can. I can teach you. Because the main thing about this rendering, it's a sales tool. Again, you're trying to convey to your clients your basic idea. So let me give you some examples. And by the way, we have this wonderful overhead setup from Ilya. Thank you. He always buys these great toys. Um, and he said, Oh, I, I can do that. We can shoot this over. So I'm going to teach you how to draw, but I want to show you. So you'll see from my renderings. In design school, we learned how to do it perspective. We learned how to uh, mathematically do a vanishing point and um, a horizon line. And you had to take into consideration how tall the viewer of the room was and where he was positioned in the room and and what that looked like exactly so that each piece was drawn in perspective to scale. That class was so intimidating, was so hard. I remember just crying because they would talk in these terms and and I just didn't understand. My brain wasn't moving fast enough to, to grasp the geometry of it and I really struggled and struggled and struggled, and I finally passed it, right? It finally finally clicks, and you finally get it. But when I do it for myself, when I do it for designing now, when I teach it, you don't have to worry about the exact perspective. This is not to scale. But it's a great conveyance of texture, of color. So here's what I mean. This is a remodel that we did, um, a house here in Kirkland. We were opening up all these walls, And there was no way for her to visualize what would her kitchen look like with the walls open. And we had to keep one support column, right? Ideally, she wanted everything lifted, uh, big vaulted ceiling, but we couldn't. There was a load-bearing wall. So I had to draw it for her so she could see, look, we'll do a column, but we'll I'll have a custom bookcase built in. We'll have the end of your, your island. It'll be gorgeous. There's nothing fancy about these renderings. There's, there's again, nothing to scale. Things are, I've had people um, point that out on the internet, of course, like that's not the right, my, my professor in college would have given that an F. This was a hundred thousand dollar design job that I sold. So (laughs) I got the last laugh. Um, But it is funny if I go through, this is actually part of the rendering class that I did for uh, the certification course. This is my living room. Um, not to scale, right? But you get the idea. 
you get the feeling of the room. Uh, I love going back. I save them all. I usually photocopy and give the, the clients a copy and, and they frame them, it's, which is a little crazy, but it's fun to go back and see the styles. Can you guess what year that was? <laughs> with uh, French country and Waverly fabrics and red and gold, I'm going to guess 2009. <laughs> but this was a typical room. Now, here's some other things that I want to point out. Um, I very rarely use a straight edge. Most of the time, it's just freeform scribbles. When you're doing something a little more architectural, like this was a rendering that was going to be given to a contractor. It was a, a client that I had in California. I was living in Washington, so I was doing remote design. And so I knew I had to have a rendering so the contractor could understand what I was talking about. With that, I actually did use a little bit of a straight edge. Um, you, you can kind of see it right there. Because I, I needed him to see where the definitive edge was, where there's going to be a transition in uh, baseboards, where there was a step up, things like that. So for the most part, you just eyeball it. Um, this was a fun bachelor pad that we did. We were going to do a built-in banquette and I wanted him to do, um, he had a big fireplace wall flat. There was no mantle, there was no hearth. And so I wanted to show him if we put stack stone up, we could make this really great focal point in his room. And we did, it looks awesome. Um, this was a house and it's also like walking down memory lane to going through. This is actually a house that we staged for, um, for a homeowner, and they just couldn't understand how I was going to take this room. They had it the same way forever. They had the same the same furniture, the same look. And so I wanted to show them how um, it could be a completely different look with white and open airy and, and you know, light colors. And we were going to update the, count, uh, the, the countertops, and we were going to update the backsplash, so just a little bit of it. And it showed a completely different look completely different um, feel for the space. Again, look at those chairs. <laughs> there is nothing mathematically perspective uh, to scale about those chairs, but they sure got the point across. Um, this is a great bedroom that we did. A client couldn't imagine two chairs in her, you know, the window. But again, you see, these are not fancy some I took a little more time on. Um, this was actually one of the San Diego Chargers houses that we did down in San Diego. It was beautiful, huge, huge, huge job. Uh, but this sold a $200,000 design job. So again, don't worry that you can't draw or that you haven't ever been able to draw because I'm going to teach you how it's less about how you draw and more about how you use it as a tool. Um, and then as I was going through my files and looking for old um, renderings that I could show you guys. Uh, I, I've always loved it. And so I found some magazine pictures that I pulled out. Um, I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due. This is Jeremiah Goodman's. I mean, this is an old time classic, um, designer. Look at, they're like watercolors, they're art, but these were renderings that he did for clients. There's nothing you know, too linear, there's no straight edge, there's no, but, but it conveys an emotion. It conveys a style. Um, here's another, which I love, and I'll show you how to use those, uh, the black marker, because that's what I call the magic pen at the end. Um, Albert Hadley, you know, another famous designer, but his renderings, simplistic. Again, some people use watercolor, some people, but for the most part, markers and pencils. And I'll, I'll show you a quick one. Um, there's the Jeremiah Goodman too. Isn't that beautiful? It's just like art. But that conveys a message. It looks rich. It looks elegant. I can imagine the client that that house is for. So let me teach you how to do this. I'm going to go through a couple little steps for basic stuff. And then I'm going to teach you the sales part of it. This isn't the whole rendering class. That's a little bit more, um, but you'll get a good sense. And, and hopefully I can give you some ideas of how you get started practicing. Now, uh, one of the other things that I teach and that most designers do is you have a sketchbook. The sketchbook is another tool. This is something that you, um, the first time you meet with a client, like I keep all of my clients in my sketchbook. I put their address, I put their phone number. As I'm walking through the first house call, 
I'm doing little floor plans, just uh, my measurements. It's all in the sketchbook. And I keep them year after year. I've got, you know, stacks of them. But that way, when a client comes back and says, I want to redo, you know, a new house or I moved and I knew I, I can go back and I can get all the notes. What was her husband's name? What was it she liked again? It's been years. Um, you know, or, or someone might want to now do window treatments. Well, you already have the measurements. It's all in one place. And you can keep, you know, volumes of them. This is one of the best sketchbooks I found lately, and it's from Michaels. You use a coupon, and they're $4.99. Um, but it's nice weight paper, perforated. You can tear it out. So I do the renderings. I All of the notes go in here. Um, when I do the certification course, I actually do a little rendering in here and sign it. But um, these are great. So Michaels, it's the Artist Loft. Inexpensive, $4.99. Buy a case of them. I mean, they're great, but it's an awesome tool. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do bigger paper. Big ideas, big paper. That's what I learned. Okay. Normally, I'm drawing with just a regular pencil for my background. Um, for video purposes, it's going to be easier to see if I use a Sharpie so that you can see the, the bigger lines. But imagine this, and, and maybe I could do a little of both. So you've got a little bit of the pencil and a little bit of the, the marker. This is the biggest shortcut. This is the thing that if you noticed, all of those rooms have something in common. They all start with me standing, looking at a corner. And this is where the perspective comes in. This is where the eyeballing comes in. So stand in the corner of your room, look, look at a corner, and then look up at the ceiling. And you'll see, so let's say here's my, my wall, right, the corner. You see the ceiling come out. And then you see the floor come out at a V. Believe it or not, this, this is, if you, can, if you can get this in the right position, that sets you up for the rest of the rendering. This is where I'll, I'll start with this sometimes and then I'll get... I'll realize, wait, I didn't leave room for the coffee table or I didn't, you can't see the part of what I wanted to show the client. So just the position of this is something that you've got to practice with. I'll give you a couple other examples. Um, this, for instance, looks like we're right in the room, right? If this is a, a room, this is a floor, let's say there's a window here, you're right there. There's not much room for furniture on the floor. But if we pull it higher up in the paper, pull it back a little, I can even put it off to the side. Maybe I want to show this wall more than this wall. This is where we're going to paint or this is where we're going to do a mural or, you know, art. These are the things I'm going to sell. That's key. Um, you know, you can start your wall over to the side, make it smaller. Now it's in the back of the room. And you'll notice that that V that dictates where you are in the room because the lines get wider further apart as they're coming towards you. So look at the difference. You'll see here, we're definitely, definitely standing way back in the room and there's plenty of room to draw. Here, I kind of box myself in. I've got a little corner. But that's, this is the simple thing. You've got to give yourself a foundation. Now, back in design school, like I said, there's a vanishing point, there's a horizon line, there's, there's you know, very technical, but I'm going to dumb it down for you. <laughs> I'm standing in the room, I'm looking at that corner, let's say my eye is looking, I'm, a, I'm five foot five, so I'm, I'm looking about right there. Every line in this room, as it's getting bigger, is going to spread out from that point. So here, look at the window, and I just eyeballed it. See how they, if you start from the one side, it's all spreading out. It's getting bigger as it comes close to you. I'll show you on this one because it'll be a little easier. So we've got windows on this wall. Your verticals are always vertical. So I'm going to put, let's say we've got two big windows. The verticals are always going to be vertical. They're going to be parallel, all of those lines. But when we do the horizontal line, it's getting bigger as it comes towards us. 
this is where I see a lot of designers um, get stumped. If you don't just get this basic part right, then you'll look too much down on top of the room or all of your furniture will look flat. But just remember, you know, think of where you're looking for. Imagine yourself standing in that room and looking at a far off point. Everything radi out, radiates out from there. With that in mind, right, we've got to put furniture in. So we've got the walls. Now, how do I get furniture over here? Most designers that I see, and I've got a couple pieces of paper, don't worry. I'm going to have to get more. <laughs> Sorry, Elliot. In fact, I'm going to start here to show you. So how many of you, again, the first, your first, um, really far into to perspective was probably elementary school when you're little. Did you ever learn to make a cube or geometry? But it starts in elementary school. You learn to draw a cube where you can see four sides. The way I learned it was you draw one square and then you draw another square and then you connect the points. And now we have a cube. Well, I started thinking about furniture and I started realizing every furniture is, it starts with a cube. And so when I simplified it, it made it really easy to eyeball furniture and to get that perspective. So you can turn this into a chair. Your back's going to be up there. You've got cushions, but see what I mean? The, here's your arm. It's coming down. Here's your seat. Don't worry, I'll get more detail. Um, but you can, you can take this cube and now you've got a three dimensional piece of furniture. So let's go back to our room. I'm going to draw that back corner. I'm going to make the room bigger so that you can see more. It's also, uh, these lines closer together. It's, it's, um, further away. These are bigger walls. If I had put them really spread out, I'd be back in the corner. No one puts Chelsea in the corner. All right, so now I want to put a piece of furniture here. Let's put our windows back in. By the way, I'm sure you guys can tell. I grew up um, watching those old art shows. Um, See, in perspective, a little off, but that's okay. Again, I don't use straight edges. I just draw it in. So I want to put a piece of furniture here. Now you kind of have to have your design, right? You have to have your floor plan. You figured out, you know, maybe there's going to be um, a sofa here. There's going to be two chairs here. There's going to be a coffee table. We need window treatments. So you have to keep all of that in mind. And I usually have my floor plan and maybe some pictures of the room that I sit out so that, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing this, um, I have a reference point. But with that in mind, you have to kind of plan ahead, especially when I'm using Sharpie and not pencil so I can't erase. Uh, I, I know a basic, you know, the floor, basic lines of a rug and see how even, even there, the lines are getting bigger as they come closer to me, right? You can, you can kind of start to see it. And this is the stuff, just practice. Look at pictures in magazines and try to follow the lines, try to follow the perspective. Um, so if I want to do that sofa right here, I think of it as that cube, I think of, you know, lines going up. I think of the back is probably going to hit the bottom of that window. So I'm going to have my sofa is going to be in the room a little. So it's going to be closer to me, right? Anything that's closer to you, it gets bigger. So I'm going to have the back of my sofa. I'm going to have my cushions. I always do those. Now, when it comes to things that are, you know, on a horizontal plane, if you can kind of see, and this is something, I know I it make it look easy, but it really is just practice. And it comes with looking at like magazine pictures and just practicing, but it's eyeballing that perspective. So we've got the fronts of the seats. Now we got to bring down the cushions and just kind of picturing what they look like. Then I'm going to add an arm. Not many people do rolled arms anymore, but coming bigger, the arm's going to go back. Watch how I do a throw pillow. We'll give it some texture. You got a throw pillow in the middle. <laughs> These cushions go back. 
We've got our other arm here. Again, it's higher and bigger because it's closer to us. And I can do a turned leg. This is how I do turned legs. <laughs> and the back's gonna go like that. It's a sofa. Put another pillow. See this, it, you could present this to a client. They're, they're gonna be amazed. And it wasn't that hard. It just takes practice. It just takes visualizing that three-dimensional piece. And you can kind of see how we've got that cube, right? Still, it's just like the elementary school, the little cube that you do. Um, Coffee tables are trickier because you are kind of looking down and they're, they're up higher. If you actually look at a room, you're not really seeing the, the front of the sofa. So you actually start, I start with that plane and then I bring it down. My verticals are always straight up and down. These lines are getting bigger as they come close to me. And then I always put a couple books. I usually put a bowl because it's easy with a plant. <laughs> and you get your legs. We're halfway to a room. <laughs> um, window treatments. Bring back window treatments. It's a great way to make money as a designer. You get so much the fabric, the, the labor, all of it. It's a great way to make money. So my drapes are always the same. Make sure that curtain rod is following your ceiling line, right? If you look up at a curtain rod, it's going to be parallel, right, with your ceiling. So it's going to be getting bigger as it comes close to you, but it's still following that line. It's still following that starburst projection from where we're looking in the room. I'll drop my panels here. Just do a little squiggle at the bottom. Bring your pleats up. Um, finial. And this is rings. <laughs> rings. Now you've got drapes. You'll probably need, with that big window, you'll need a center panel. <laughs> so this is the basics, right? This is just, it's like, it's like finger painting. It's like just basic coloring, but it'll, it'll, your clients are going to be amazed because they, oh, okay, you know, I can, that's, those are my windows. I can see, and there's all sorts of little tricks. You want um, something to look like glass. You put little little lines. Um, you know, again, I do a karate chop on my pillow. You can do shading in the corners. Um, but this is the basic. If you can do this kind of, even just black and white drawings, you're going to be so far ahead of your competition. And look at, you know, you can do this on the spot. You don't have to wait and have your clients wait to go back and do a 3D rendering. You can just do this now. Um, got our TV. And again, see how the lines slightly off. I went a little crazy on my TV. I'm going to have a cabinet that's coming out from the wall. And I, I leave the lines on there, I, these scribble lines. Um, again, it's sort of like an impressionistic painting. And the clients, they can tell that you did it. They can tell that it wasn't, you know, on a computer. And they like that. Uh, it's a lost art. Look, there's a console. <laughs> art on the side. Again, just as long as you get those lines. And that, that is the hardest thing to practice, is getting the lines to where they're radiating out. Things are getting bigger as they come towards you. And you're visualizing how this furniture is sitting on the floor. You're not drawing, drawing it in two-dimensional. You're drawing it as a cube. That's important. Just to remember, you've got to have this depth. But you start with the lines that you know, and then you, you fill in the gaps. It's like, it's like that cube. You connect the little dots. So let me teach you a couple of the um, go-to tricks. First of all, you want it to be sloppy. When I first started doing renderings, I was so precise and I would draw a pillow and I would put, you know, little, the little tassel fat, you know, everything was so detailed. And I had a customer once say, well, where are the tassels on the pillow? You, in the drawing, it had tassels. 
well, Tassel didn't fit into her budget. <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell her. If I had never drawn tassels on the pillows, she wouldn't have known. So when I'm doing these renderings, I keep it really loose, really, again, impressionistic. My accessories, accessories come in and out of, uh, of stock. They, they're, you usually buy those the last two weeks before you're going to install. So you don't want to um, lock yourself in, you know, unless they have a sculpture you're designing around. But for the most part, it's a generic bowl. You do a lot of plants. And see, just scribbles, again, you haven't locked yourself in to anything. The sofa is the basic shape. It's the basic impression. Then we'll learn to add color and texture. But for right now, you just want to give them the impression. But that looks pretty good, right? A, a customer could see that. You know, a customer would say, oh, okay, yeah, oh, with the drapes, it's going to look great. Look at that. Um, so let me tell you some of the tricks with the markers and the pencils. Now, some of these pens, some of these markers... I'm going to drive Ellie crazy with the microphones. Um, some of these I've had since design school. That's 1992. <laughs> they last forever. As long as you take care of them and you put your caps on tight. But I love Prismacolor. I've been using them since college. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you the thing I like about the most is this chisel. They have a great chisel edge. And I use that, again, as a tool. You use the chisel in your favor. So you start with your grays. And the grays in, in these, these Prismacolor markers come in um, percentages. And they come in warm, cool, neutral, and French. And then you have percentages of the, of the pigment. So, um, you know, usually you want to start with like a 30, a 20. This is a French gray 80. This is a warm gray 70. Um, taupe. <laughs> but starting with your grays, cool gray 80. Let me get a lighter gray. There's a cool gray 70. So starting with your shadows. And again, you don't have to do the precision. It's just, this is an art school. This is just conveying uh, um, an idea, right? But you still want to give it some depth. So using that chisel, I start at the edge, like underneath the sofa, and you pull out and leave some white. We know the sun's coming in from this window. It's going to be hitting the back of that sofa. So this is going to be a little shadowed right at that crease. But see how when you get that it actually overlaps. The, the marker is transparent. And so it builds upon each other. You don't, you're not just coloring. Do these little, here's from the table. We're going to have more shadow coming out. This is not perfect. This is not perfection by any means. Um, you'll have some shadow over here. You'll have a little shadow on the side there. Your art. The drapes will have shadows. But you can start to see it coming into view, right? But using that chisel, let's say I'm going to shade back here behind the curtains. I'm going to start at the bottom of the wall and drag it up. So it naturally darkens at the bottom where you held the marker, and it makes it darker at the bottom. And it, it looks more realistic. So you're using that chisel to actually help you get the effect. Now here's the, another tip you might notice. With the drapes, I'm going up and down, right? Vertical. They're following the lines. When it comes to a piece of furniture that's three-dimensional and it's living out here in the middle of the room, use your markers to follow the lines of the furniture. So these cushions are going up. So I'm going to start in the corner, in the, in the bottom, and I'm going to brush up, leaving white. And then you saw on the seat, I went down here and that plane, if you could imagine the sofa, it's coming out the front of the cushion. I'm going to go down again, but it starts to build the texture of the fabric. And again, it, it gives that put a little shadow there, that sense of three dimensional. Um, you can layer the different kinds of grays. You can layer the, um, this is that 
that's not taupe, no, warm gray, 70. But look how cool it is when they overlap. Let's say this fabric is a, is a darker gray. And you can start to see how the layers of the different colors of ink, they work together. And it looks sort of like those renderings, right, that I was showing you from the, the old-time famous designers. Um, very impressionistic. Um, we'll put some more shadows over here. And this is also when you start to, you, to do some texture. So let me go back to the floor. Usually it's hardwoods, right? Um, it always helps to kind of know which way their hardwoods are running just because, it, again, they'll say, oh, that's my living room. Um, so let's say they're coming out this way. They're going to get bigger as they come towards me. So out here, they're going to be wider. That's a pretty wide plank, huh? Going away, they're going to get smaller. But this is a great opportunity for some texture. So if this is a board, right, we're going to put the, the little cross pieces in. We used to actually, I used to put little dots, like for the nails, but we don't do that anymore. Um, wood grain. You can put some wood grain. Let's say it's kind of a, um, a rustic barn wood floor. And you're giving it some texture. Now when I put the marker over it, I'm going to use, is that, no, oh, I can't, brick, brick, beige is my nemesis. The color on the end looks like this beautiful color, and it turns peach every time. I'm, I'm tricked by it. Um, I know, 25 years of, of complaining about brick beige. I should just get rid of them all. Um, okay, so here's dark brown, definite go-to. Starting with the chisel, close to the oops, close to the wall, because it'll start darker where I've put it down and held it, and I'm following the lines, leaving some white, and it can be darker on the edge of that where the rug is. So now we've got our floors, and it does not have to be fancy. It can be scribbled, right? Looks pretty good. Okay. Um, I'm going to make the sofa, oh, we said dark gray, right? Let's do a color, though, because I want you to see how the colors layer over the gray. We'll do um, periwinkle. So you do the gray first. You put in that layer that, that's going to give you the shadows, and then you put your color right over it. So let's say this is, she's doing a bright, crazy blue sofa. <laughs> And it goes right over those shadows, but I'm still following the lines, the plane of that part of the piece of furniture. So up and down on the fronts of the cushions, radiating towards me on the seats. You do a little curve here. It's darker underneath there because we've got some shadows. And then the arm. So again, not many people do curved arms anymore, but even that I'm doing with the arm that curve and the lines of the marker give dimension and depth to your drawing. Now let's say you want to put a pattern. There's a solids, right? Easy peasy. Let's do a pattern on the drapes and the rug. In design school, I spent months trying to perfect the perfect representation of a pattern of fabric. We were given a piece of fabric and you have to replicate it in a drawing. Ah, painstakingly, every little line, every, and I realized, again, clients don't, they see the fabric, it's in front of them. You don't have to try to exactly replicate it. So let's say I want to do a pattern on these drapes. You, get, you, have, you have curves in these drapes, you've got folds, your fabric is moving, the light is changing. So I'm just going to do a little squiggle. Let's say it's, um, that's a popular kind of a, a pattern, um, like a lattice kind of a, but you don't want to overdo it. They get it that that's a pattern that matches the sofa. Oh, look, the blue. <laughs> Same thing with rugs. If you're doing just a texture rug, great. You can just do some dots. But if you want to do a pattern, sort of like um, a more traditional, here, we'll go really crazy and do Tuscan red. I usually do, let's say it has a center medallion, like a traditional um, oriental rug. 
then I do kind of like that, like that, and then I might do something in the corners. See how fancy this is? <laughs> you can do this, it's not. Add just a couple colors. Ooh, I don't want to, I mean, I draw a limit at um, some of these markers. I don't want to, it's bad enough we're doing peach and um, dark blue, well, royal blue. There we go. But that gives the impression, boom, there's a rug. Pretty simple. Um, when you're doing the table, if you're doing glass, you're gonna do those little swish marks again. If you're doing wood or concrete, let's see, let's do, it's another dark brown. Um, again, with kind of the grain of wood, I'm not just gonna color, I'm gonna make it look like it's planked by using that chisel, using the lines, and now it gives the impression that that's wood. You can even do the little texture if you want. Boom, and leaving some white spots. Um, let me show you how hard plants are. <laughs> I'll do that as a plant. Now again, normally this is pencil, and I'm going over it with pencil. Um, but these are, these are my plants. Yeah, a little thing trailing. If you want it to be a um, uh, 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 orchid. <laughs> There's an orchid. <laughs> Um, you want a fiddly fig? Those are really popular. Let's put one, can we see over here? Yeah, we'll do. I mean, who can't do this, right? It just takes practice to get the lines going the right direction. That's the hardest, hardest thing. When you do plants, though, I will tell you, it always looks really fancy if you add in a little bit of dark and light because plants are never all one color, right? That's kind of the same color. But you get the gist. We gotta, now I have to put <laughs> branches in my tree and a pot. And there's our fig. But, uh, yeah, fine art, this is not. Um, here's some tricks for windows. This, this is one of those little details, again, that I don't even know what the outside of their house looks like half the time. But if I know they're in our area, there's going to be green trees. We live in Washington. There's green trees everywhere. So I go in, the, and it gives, this gives depth. So I'll go in the back and just do some little dots. Represents a tree. You could do grass, but it, you know you're not seeing a clear. I don't want them to see the yard. I want them to feel like, oh, that's outside. Oh, that's my front yard. And hold on, I have my favorite window gray is cool gray twenty, and I put that over top of the color. You won't be able to see this really in the video, but it's almost white. It's really light, 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 light blue, but it looks kind of like glass. Um, so once you get to this point, right, and you've got your marker and you've got your shading, you've got your perspective and you've got, you know, the, the gist of it, you're not finished. You have to use pencil over your marker. I've seen people do watercolor. I've seen people just do pencil, but this, for some reason, it gives it the depth. It gives it the texture and it just takes it that one step further. So let me add some pencil and I'll show you because this isn't a great color, right? Who wants their sofa to be that color? So I've got my handy pencils here. Do I have my navy? Na oh, that's violet. That'll be even worse. Please don't ever tell me that purple's coming back. <laughs> no one wants to design around a purple sofa. Oh, I forgot we have one in our office, right? There's that. Indigo. Okay, so even over this really bright marker, once I start putting the pencil in, and again, it's a scribble. There's nothing detailed. You're not having to do a weave or, but it adds that texture over the marker and it gives it some depth. Still leaving white. You always wanna leave some white. It's highlights. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect as to where, like the sun was coming in, this is probably highlighted. No one gets that picky. 
but just the basics. And look, leaving white, leaving spaces, you don't ever want to fill it in. This isn't coloring like a coloring book. It's sketching, but still doing those lines. Rounded on my arms, straight up and down, straight on the fronts. Now there's a blue sofa. Same thing. Anywhere you have marker, now it doesn't have to be directly over the marker, but anywhere you have marker, you gotta put pencil. And you can do a little more detail. So you can kind of see the pattern coming through. Um, watch what happens to the wood when you start to do pencil. So on here, say it's a planked table. This is where you can start to put in some texture. Not fancy, don't go overboard. When you overdo it, that's when it starts to look childish. <laughs> like this doesn't look childish. But you see, this, this is an impressionistic rendering. Bam, let's give the plant. I forgot the plant. And you gotta go over it with pencil, even the plants. But you can use your, like I've got a darker green. Here on this one, this orchid needs to be. And look at, you can kind of fix mistakes. We gotta, we gotta do the flower, right? Um, our fiddly fig. It's just gonna add some depth. It hardly takes any extra time. But it, it's, it's what you need to give the layers, the, the texture. On the windows, okay, so we did the grass, right? And we did these little swishes. I go over it with white and it blurs it a little, kind of like it would be looking through glass. You're not gonna see the, the yard, but look, it gives the, the idea that you're looking out glass. Voila. Um, all of it is, is, it's the same thing. It's formulaic, it's rinse, repeat. Oh, I'm back to turquoise. Um, I'm still doing the same kind of thing with the pattern. It gives the illusion, it gives the, the impression of it. Let me get, now that I chose that coral color. Ooh. Got a center medallion. Maybe I better put some of this color in the, the pillows, right? So that it ties, ties the room together. The rug ties the whole room together. Little shout out to the big Lebowski. Boom, uh, scribbles, but boy, that conveys, <laughs> that really does convey a, a, um, an idea that you had. So this is gonna be harder to show because of uh, the Sharpie, but the final step. So this is important. It's the roller, roller ball, doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, I like, um, just practice, right? Right. See which one works well for you. But the reason that I like the, the gel ink, the roller, is because it doesn't get gummed up in the pencil. And if you've used too many layers of pencil, it's really easy to ruin a pen. But this is the magic. This is the marker that brings the, the details to life. It's hard to show it because of the Sharpie, but you can see, look at this drawing. It's exactly like we talked about. There's just scribbles for the texture. That's to show that it's a chenille, something really textural. The rug, you know, there's a pattern in the rug, but not when I drew it. I just need to show that there's a pattern in the rug. You can see the way I shaded. You can see the way I shaded the ceiling and the lines are getting bigger as they come towards you. Everything that I teach, that I just taught you guys, this is, I do it every time for every project. And they sure sell your design. So I just want to show you, like in here, there's not much detail on this sofa. You can actually use this marker to give even more texture. Let's say you have one of the fur rugs, right? You can give texture there. It just adds a little detail and it makes things pop. Um, you can do, you know, crosshatch. Sometimes on, on carpet, we'll do little little dots to show that it's carpet. Um, you can always like cross hatch on a, on a shadow. If you want to make it look really artsy as you're getting fancier, your plants, <laughs> there's the, another orchid, right? They're all the same. Um, but, and even here, like I was doing texture on this blanket to show that it's a woven knit yarn, 
But this, the, the black pen you have to have. You have to do the black pen. You have to do marker with pencil over it. And the rest of it is just eyeballing it, eyeballing perspective, eyeballing the feel of it. Does it feel like the room that you want to, you know, uh, portray to your, your clients? Is this give the same image that you have in your brain? Doesn't have to be exactly accurate, but it needs to have that feel. Let me see. So, um, couple other little tips. Again, keep your accessories really loose. They've got to be generic. You don't want to get locked into anything. You need to, to have a sense of where their light is in the room because it makes it look a little more realistic. If you have, you know that the light's coming from the windows, so you're going to have some highlights, right? If that light is shining through, it's going to hit just the front edges. It's going to hit parts of the table. It's going to hit parts of the rug. And that gives it more of an artistic look, even though it's just scribble. Um, try to get things as in the room, in perspective as you can, but don't overthink it. Don't be so hard on yourself. You don't have to do this beautiful you know, portrait. It just needs to convey an idea. And your clients are going to love it. They're going to love the work you put into it. They're going to love that it's an art piece. They're going to frame it, I promise. I always sign them and put the date on it. Uh, here we'll sign. Uh, but this is, it's a tool. I can sit down with a client now and I'll have the fabric samples and I'll have pictures of the sofa and I can see this is your room. I was imagining if you have your sofa on this wall and, or your, excuse me, your TV's on this wall and we can put some decorations. We'll put a beautiful console underneath it. We've got your sofa that's, you know, more in the middle of the room, but it's facing out towards, you know, I don't know, but I, you're talking through it and you're using this as a tool. You know, I want to put a big tree on this side to balance out the weight of the television on that side. I think drapes will give a beautiful long line to the wall and we'll be able to tie in the blue from there to your sofa and then a little bit into the rug. So you can walk the client through it. It's like they're in the room. It's like they're part of it already. And they just fall in love. This is, this is probably the biggest thing that I do in design to sell my products or to sell my, my projects. These renderings have set me apart and they're really not anything special. You saw how quick it is. I usually do about 30 minutes for a rendering. Um, and again, you can do it on the spot. When you're there with your client, it's a way to say, let me show you. And you can quickly sketch something out. It's a tool you have always at your disposal. And this is going to sell your designs. This is going to make you a real designer. Exciting. Uh, I hope I gave you guys some tips. I, ho I hope it wasn't too fast or that you really can do this. And the best thing, start looking in magazines or start in your room. Look off into a distance and really start to look at the lines. Here's my back wall. If I were to draw the ceiling, what is that shape? You know, put yourself in different places in a room. Maybe you're looking straight on at a back wall. Bedrooms, you do a lot of that where it's straight on at the bed and then you've got the nightstands on the side. Picture the room in three-dimensional and then just practice. Practice sketching things out so they look full, so you're not looking just down on top of them, so that you've got some depth. And you're going to be amazed at how this, this will completely revolutionize a design business. Thank you, everyone, so much, and happy designing. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Design for a Living with Chelsea Coriel. Our episodes will be dropping on Sunday, so stay tuned. We are on Google Podcasts and Spotify, so stay tuned for that and follow along. Thanks so much for being with us. Find us online at designforaliving.com. Visit us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and House at Design for a Living. If you'd like to submit a question or request a topic, email us at chelsea at designforaliving.com. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A at designforaliving.com.